Good day. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Douglas Harder, and in this topic we're going to discuss the fundamental theorem of algebra. In this topic we will observe that not all polynomials may have as many roots as is equal to the degree of the polynomial. We will describe the multiplicity of, the, of a root of a polynomial and then introduce the fundamental theorem of algebra. The degree of a polynomial is the highest power of the indeterminate that has a non-zero coefficient when expanded. So for example, the degree of that first polynomial is 7, the degree of a linear polynomial is of course 1, the degree of a constant that is non-zero is 0, and the degree of 0 is a special case that is given the degree of negative infinity. There's some good reasons for this, but you don't have to worry about that. A polynomial p has a root at a specific point z0 if p evaluated at that point is equal to 0. All non-zero polynomials p have at most degree of p roots. So for example, that first polynomial has at most 7 roots. If we restrict ourselves to looking only at real roots, some non-constant polynomials may actually have no roots. For example, z squared plus 1 and z to the fourth minus 3z cubed plus 4z squared minus z plus 2 are two polynomials that have no real roots. Now, a polynomial p has a root at a point z0 if p can be written in the form z minus z0 times q of z, where q of z is a polynomial of one less degree than p. So for example, this cubic polynomial has a root at z equals 2 because it can be written as a product of z minus 2 times the quadratic polynomial z squared minus 3z minus 4. Now, from this point on, roots may be complex. So for example, the polynomial on the left-hand side does actually have a root at 1 minus 2j. And we can see that because we can factor out that linear polynomial producing the product of a linear polynomial and a cubic. Of course, you're not going to have to do this that much in this course, but you just have to be aware that this is how you can factor out roots of a polynomial. We will do this, but it's not critical to this course. There are actually software packages that find these roots. They'll do that for you. All right, now you know from secondary school that a polynomial may have a double root. Now, what is a double root? Well, z squared has a double root at z equals zero. This quartic polynomial has a double root at z equals one. A polynomial p has a double root at z0 if it can be written in the form z minus z0 all squared times q of z, where q is a polynomial of degree 2 less than the degree of p. For example, z squared can be written as z minus 0 all squared times 1, where 1 is the constant polynomial. Here is a quartic polynomial and it has a double root at z equals 1, so it can be written as z minus 1 all squared times the quadratic z squared minus z minus 12. We will now introduce the following definition. A polynomial p has a root at z naught of multiplicity m if that polynomial can be written in the form z minus z naught raised to the power m times q of z, where q is a polynomial with the properties that it has the degree m less than de the degree of p, and where q at z naught is not equal to zero. That is, q does not have a root at z naught. Now, you may wonder, how do we determine the multiplicity of 
a root z0. What we're going to do is we will keep dividing the polynomial by z minus z0 until the remainder is non-zero. Recall that if the remainder after dividing a polynomial p by z minus z0 is r, then p at z0 is equal to r. Thus, if the remainder is 0, p at z0 is equal to 0, and therefore z0 is a root of p. Let's try it out just as an example. Consider the following quartic polynomial. We will determine the multiplicity of a root, if any, at the points z equals 3, 2, and 1. Starting at z equals 3, we divide the polynomial by z minus 3. After performing polynomial long division, we get a remainder of 12. Well, 12 is non-zero, and therefore the polynomial does not have a root at z equals 3, and at 3, the polynomial actually evaluates to 12. Let's check at z equals 2. Now, when we do polynomial long division, we do get that the remainder is 0, and therefore the polynomial has a root at z equals 2 of at least multiplicity 1. Okay, now having formed this, we know that p is now z minus 2 times this cubic. Let us continue doing long division on the cubic and see what happens. When we do polynomial long division of z minus 2 divided, dividing the cubic, we still get a remainder of 0, and therefore the polynomial, the original polynomial, at z equals 2 has at least multiplicity 2. Thus we know that p of z is z minus 2 times this quadratic. Well, now let's divide the quadratic by z minus 2. Well, at this point, we get that the remainder is 5, and therefore, the polynomial has a root at z equals 2 of multiplicity equal to 2. And if we evaluate that quadratic at z equals 2, we get a value of 5. But most importantly, we now know that the multiplicity of the root at z equals 2 is indeed 2. Let's check at z equals 1. We do polynomial long division and we get a remainder of 0. Consequently, the polynomial has a root at z equals 1 of at least multiplicity 1. Well, that means that I can write p as z minus 1 times this cubic. Let's try again by dividing the cubic by z minus 1, and, oh, we get a remainder of 4. Okay, so now we know that the polynomial at z equals 1 does have a multiplicity of 1, there, and if we were to evaluate that cubic at z equals 1, we get a result of 4. But most importantly, we know that the polynomial has a root of multiplicity 1 at z equals 1. Consequently, we know that this quartic polynomial has a po root at z equals 2 with multiplicity 2 and a root at z equals 1 with multiplicity 1. That's just coincidental. The polynomial does not have a root at z equals 3. Now, here's another test to determine the multiplicity of a root. Find the value of the function at z0 then the derivative at z0, and continue finding and evaluating higher derivatives at z0 until you finally reach the kth derivative where there is a non-zero value at z0. In that case, the multiplicity of the root at z0 is k. Remember that p at z0 can be interpreted as evaluating the zeroth derivative at z0. So once again, let's consider the polynomial we saw before. It's a quartic. I can calculate its derivative, second derivative, third derivative. Notice that the fourth derivative is a constant. That's important 
because that essentially guarantees that the multiplicity of any root can never exceed 4. Well, p of 3 is equal to 12, so z equals 3 is not a root. p at 2 and the derivative at 2 are both 0, but the second derivative at 2 is 10. Therefore, z equals 2 is a root with multiplicity 2. p at 1 is equal to 0, but the derivative of p at 1 is not 0, and therefore z equals 1 is a root with multiplicity 1. Okay, now we've described multiplicity and described how to find it. Now we go on to the main result. The fundamental theorem of algebra. A polynomial of degree n has exactly n complex roots when counting multiplicity. Here's a sketch of the proof. The little Picard theorem says that every non-constant polynomial must take on every possible complex number for some argument. A polynomial of degree n greater than 0 is not constant, and thus there must be a point z0 such that p at z0 is equal to 0. We can use polynomial division to divide out this root so that we find that p of z is equal to z minus z0 times q of z, and as long as q of z is not constant, we can repeat this algorithm on q of z to find the next root of p. For example, this is a quintic polynomial, and it has five roots that are approximately given by these points here. If you wish, you can actually try to evaluate this quintic at each of these points, and yes, you will get a number that is not exactly 2, but very close to 0. You should also notice something else. What is the relationship between the first and second roots and the second and third roots? How would you describe that similarity? So, in summary, in this topic, we have described the roots of a polynomial. Specifically, we've observed that a real polynomial of degree n may have fewer than n real roots. We introduced the concept of multiplicity and we gave the fundamental theorem of algebra. That is, a polynomial of degree n has exactly n complex roots when counting multiplicity. Here are some references, acknowledgments, the colophon, and a disclaimer. Cheers!